Chancer? Yes. Berg? Yes. Colson? Yes. Number 16, I'm guessing we'll have Jason back up here, but this is a discussion item. Um, over the past four months, I believe, this committee has, um, has put snow removal on the agenda to discuss and allow citizens to discuss as well. And uh, our, our plan was actually reviewed by several other communities uh, to make some internal adjustments um, to better our snow removal for the city. So with that, I understand Jason's got a, got a report for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, not necessarily a report. You know, I, I put together our, our findings in the memo, and I'd, I'd certainly be answer, or happy to answer any questions if there are any. Or would you like me to go through it all? Maybe, maybe give us a brief synopsis, and then we can follow up with questions, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Um, thank you. Uh, so internally, you know, we, we looked at our snow plan, compared it to a lot of different communities, and, you know, essentially when you when you look at community snow plans are all relatively the same as ours. You know, you, you concentrate on on the high traffic routes, then you move toward residential. And, uh, you know, so when we look through our plan, um, you know, we, we didn't see any major modifications that we had recommend to the plan itself. You know, we, we've added some some uh, other roads to uh, emergency snow routes to, to make sure that we've got good corridors around town. Um, you know, the, the, I guess the surprising part of the review was the external part. Um, you know, we, we contacted uh, the city of Grand Forks, the city of Fargo, Bismarck, Mandan, and uh, it ju just out of pure coincidence, we were contacted by the city of Missoula, Montana, and the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin. And then uh, we've also been in contact with the city of Sioux Falls. So, like I said, all those communities basically have a snow plan similar to ours, but the I guess the stark contrast is when you look at the number of miles per unit of equipment, um, we're at about 109, and the next closest um, city is about 67. You know, so, you know, when, when you talk to these other communities, they say if you want to get through the town faster, you need more people and more equipment. It's, it's just kind of how it works, you know. So, you know, we, so when, when we got that information, we, we've looked at, you know, some, some things, you know, during, the, during these last storms, you know, we had a lot of breakdowns. So we're going to look at the type of equipment that we're renting, um, make sure it's newer with less hours so we're not dealing with uh, maintenance. We're going to look at maybe leasing a few additional pieces of equipment. Um, they may not always get used, but if something does break down, we can immediately get another piece of equipment on the road so we're not, you know, instead of... You know, this this winter, instead of having eight blades on the road, there were times when we had four. So, you know, obviously that slows the process down. You know, a lot of talk on snow gates. Um, very few communities use them. That's actually why the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin, called us. We've the city of Minot is, I guess, known as one of the poster children for for uh, snow gates. We've been using them since the 1960s, which is it was amazing to to me that I didn't I didn't realize that they'd been in use that long. And, uh, you know, the, the general consensus is, yeah, we could pull the snow gates off, and that would probably speed up our operation by about 30%. But even today, running snow gates, we still get a lot of complaints with the amount of snow that we, we deliver into driveways. So we certainly don't recommend, uh, recommend making, making that move. You know, so, so all in all, I, I think it was a pretty uh, positive experience, you know, looking through and, and comparing and contrasting with other communities. And, you know, I think Dan shared last time the, the city of Missoula, we had a very good conversation with them, and they have a very convoluted um, uh, snow plan. When they saw ours, they said, your guys is great. So they, they planned on taking our snow plan and modifying it and adopting it as their own. And, uh, you know, what you find in some of these larger communities, you know, I, I know that the city of Denver was used as, as, as an example of something that we should do. Well, in talking with the city of Denver, I did get in, in contact with their uh, street supervisor, and they actually don't have anything in their snow plan as far as residential streets. As a rule, they don't plow residential streets unless there's a foot or more forecast. You know, so, you know, do you, do you add more equipment to, to handle residential during the storm or do we just continue to handle it like, like we currently are? You know, um, either way, there's going to be a delay. You know, if you get that much snow with that much wind in that short amount of time, there's going to be a delay for when people are going to be able to get out of their houses onto the streets, you know, we're we're certainly making every every effort and every attempt possible to get out, get into those neighborhoods as quickly as possible. 
I have one question. Um, in the equipment list where, you know, you list the, the cities, the lane miles, the equipment, miles <laughs> per unit, and time to clear, um, it, we don't show that we have any loaders. Is that, that, that's not true, though, is it? We, we do. And they're, they're not necessarily on the road when the, uh, you know, when the blades are. You know, it, they, they might be used later for blowing or so, you know, we're looking at, you know, when, when we're out actually clearing snow, what pieces of equipment are out there? And, and basically it's those, those uh, 12, 12 pieces mainly. But yeah, there depends on the event and, and what's going on. But yeah, there are a couple of loaders. And, and that's one of our recommendations. We're gonna look at the budget and see if there isn't a possibility that we could lease a couple of additional. Well, that was my one concern is if you look at, you know, comparing Bismarck or Grand Forks, they have they have actually less blades than us, um, but they listed you know seven loaders in Bismarck and six in Grand Forks, and were able to to do it for you know almost half, maybe even a little more than half in some cases, um, for the the miles per unit. So, if if there's some opportunity, I would think that 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 loader might be the opportunity because it could be used, you know, all seasons most likely for the city as well. What, so. One of the things that happened this year is since we had all of the wind and all the drifting that we used our uh, snow blowers a lot, once you put that snow blower on a piece of equipment, one of, our, one of our loaders, then it ties that piece of equipment up and it can't be out, you know, clearing intersections or whatnot. So that's why we'd, we'd like to look into leasing a couple so we have a couple spares on board. Alderman Strait. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Jason, can you, is there any way to improve the razor system or the other than just this little dot traveling around, is there any way of providing residents like this is what's been done? This is what's uh, on Madam the Chair, Alderman Strait, it, it's yeah, it, that program we will admit has some limitations. Um, and you know, that I've been looking, okay. and there, there aren't. I haven't found one that that I look as as a silver bullet to cure all the uh, concerns and issues that that people have. You know, we're, we recently, I think last month, you guys just approved some technology that'll go on our garbage trucks, and it's very sophisticated. I can't necessarily find a, a similar type of of application for snow removal, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop looking. I, we we understand that you know people want to know not just where we've been, but where maybe we're heading next. And, and that's, that's something we're gonna look at next year. If, if nothing else, maybe we can get some maps on our website with a shaded area of you know, where we're heading next. You know, it, it, it might be a little, little crude, but at least you know, to try to get some info out to people. I'd like to just piggyback on that real quick because I think it's important that we're talking about this razor system and that we incorporate the street sweepers into that as well. Because you know, as important as it is to talk about removing that snow, now we're moving into that season where we have a tremendous amount of sand and salt and, and everything else that's on the sides of the roads and people are still parking there. So if we're going to be improving it for the snow side, we need to incorporate that as well into that uh, street sweeper too. Sure. So, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Jason, <laughs> just since uh, Mr. Jonason isn't here, I'm going to throw him under the bus a little bit. Um, can we talk about Mount Jonason up on North Hill a little bit <laughs> and um, what's the... Uh, I see Mr. Collins in the back of the room. I, I think there's some concern that the mountain isn't going to go away before rec season. What's the game plan? We've we've packed a lot of snow in there clearly, and I, you know, maybe it's going to all melt and be gone. But is there a backup plan? Or uh, Madam Madam Chair, Alderman Strait, um, I, I've been asked that question a lot, I'm and sure. I can't necessarily answer it. You know. Um, Every other year, Mother Nature's been on our side and they've made it disappear. We understand that, that, uh, that Scott has operations that need to, need to move in there this summer and you know, we, we don't wanna be uh, a burden on, on his operation. So we'll, we'll monitor the pile and uh, you know, if, as, as things start getting lower or smaller, you know, we, we can go up there with equipment and spread it out, help it melt faster. You know, and then there's always a cleanup effort at the end to clean up the sand and the pop bottles and, and all the, the garbage that comes with uh, clearing streets. Uh, I guess just a quick follow-up that if we end up with this again, I think most people have said that we should put together a lottery system and raise money, have a little drawing. I know people don't want to gamble, but that has been it mentioned. seems like that there's a way to raise money for a loader. 
the other, something. The other thing is it you, the garbage thing. It, I drove by it yesterday. There's a tremendous, tremendous amount of garbage that's coming out of that snow pile, and it's going to be all over up there. So I think it's important that we be proactive and maybe look at some of our service groups are having a cleanup day that's going to be um, aggressively looking at that that mess that's left up there because if you drive by it you'll see it it's just garbage everywhere up there right now there's so. there must be some parking lots around town missing parking blocks because we seem to have a few in our inventory all of a sudden <laughs> so. Alderman Padragula. I think Kosin was first oh. uh, Jason on here with Sioux Falls it says they have 70 units can you explain what those units are do they go into detail at all Madam Chair Alderman Kosin um, Talking with the city of Sioux Falls is very eye-opening. Um, they're, they're obviously a much larger community, you know, probably to the tune of about three times larger than us. But those are 70 blades. They 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 own a a certain amount, and I think they lease 40 of them. And in their lease, they lease brand new machines. You know, so in in some years we've actually gotten the turned-in units from Sioux Falls, which were next to new. But uh, they actually require brand new machines. Uh, just a follow up on that, Jason. Do they, and this maybe uh, probably requires some digging, do they indicate at all as to how they pay for leasing <laughs> 40 units? That was the eye opening part, Alderman Cosin. Um, they, they have, a, and, I, and I, Dan had the conversation with the city of Sioux Falls, so I'm trying to re recollect some numbers, but I think they have about a a $17 million street department budget, and snow removal is not a component of that. They have a separate, um, I believe it's a $7 million snow removal budget, and then on top of that, they assess 30, I think it's $30 per front foot for lot frontage, which generates another like $5.2 million. So, you know, that that's one of the issues that we've had is, you know, snow removal just is kind of, you know in our budget and you know we it it's challenging you know I I certainly like their model but understand that people aren't uh, a favor of you know more assessments and more taxes so trying to balance the two and and, and find that find the right mix thank you for your insight any other questions Alderman Pajagula yeah um, more comments I think so I think you've answered the questions I guess the first comment would be that I want to compliment whoever put this report together um, it provides me the kind of information I want and need and the kind of information I think citizens need <clears throat> I've already disseminated even before this meeting to a co-worker of my wife's who had questions about um, about snow removal so we're getting the, the word out so good job to whoever put this together um, I like many of the suggestions here in terms of having a tracking system for where the plows are New York City actually has when I stumbled on it on the internet uh, their people are extraordinarily impatient <laughs> and demanding and um, it, it might be worth something worth looking at so I, I agree with Shannon very much that we need to have some idea and I like even what you're saying just a rough idea of you know today we're gonna be in this part of town I think that even that would help um, the thing that bothers me about the razors is all those little dots and the lines go back and forth and it's hard to make sense of it and I, I understand you appreciate that um, in terms of you know buying versus renting equipment I really like the idea of having more in reserve and having more modern equipment you know I think the way the weather is going in this world the way the climate is going we're probably going to have more high rain and high snow events and I can't justify spending a lot of money and a lot of personnel costs on having people sit around waiting for these things to happen I think the day-to-day -day snow removal is fine I mean, we can tweak it, obviously. We probably should, in my opinion, kick it up a notch. But um, the problem is that these, these equip this equipment won't be used very frequently. And, uh, you know, what I'd recommend that you do is look f if, and I, I really do think we probably need more staff and certainly more equipment, is that you look at kind of dual purpose, purposing these people and, and this equipment. Like Miranda was saying, you know, things, pieces of equipment can be used in the summer. I'm concerned, too, from a human factor standpoint, if we have 16 pieces of equipment and 15 operators, you know, operators get sick, too. They get tired. And, you know, I know this winter it was a, a real burden on them, and I want to make sure they don't get burned out. I want to make sure we have adequate staff. This may involve some cross training from other departments. You know, maybe they won't be totally proficient, but um, so when people are sick or when they're getting sick, you know, we can give them the relief they need. Um, and you know, I, I think you know, hiring contractors and, and having equipment on standby. And it's very eye-opening what you tell us about Sioux Falls. Um, 
the couple things I think that I would be interested in adding to what you've already suggested, and I, and I should add too that the data, the comparative data on the cities is just excellent and very, very eye-opening. And that's the kind of context that I, I want to see and, and, and I, um, when the city manager gets done, <laughs> when the city manager gets done, I mean this is the kind of stuff I, I've been lobbying for. You know, numbers without a context are meaningless. And if we can see that Grand Forks has, uh, excuse me, Bismarck has the same amount of streets and, uh, you know, they have 67 miles versus our 109 miles per unit. I mean, that's the reason we're behind. <laughs> it's very obvious. So that, that's the kind of information that's extremely helpful and was very eye-opening even to the constituent who got it this morning, um, you know, in terms of why it took longer. I, I guess the, the areas I would encourage you to, to follow up on that you haven't mentioned would be, um, the enforcement issue. Uh, you, you did say something about alternate street parking, and I would encourage you to, to kind of look at that, some sort of way of getting the cars off the street. But I think the big thing would be an earlier uh, declaration of a snow emergency and restriction on parking. When it looks like it's going to get challenging, let's, let's do that right away so make, make it easier for the trucks and the blades. And then you won't have the problem, too, of cars being buried there for hours or days, which slows everybody down and narrows the streets. Um, but that's the only, you know, substantive uh, suggestion or uh, recommendation I'd offer besides what's in here. Uh, you know, I, I may or may not be on the next council, and that's something the next council will have to deal with in terms of budgeting. But my personal opinion and that of the constituents I represent um, is that I think we need to, we need to improve the, the, the snow <coughs> removal, and I think the, the bottom line is going to be more, more equipment and more person power. Um, how much, I don't know. And it would be nice to have some sense of maybe in, in the budget estimates what it would take to bring us closer to the Bismarck level. I don't think we need to be at the level of Missoula um, or someplace like that. I think people are patient around here. But I think, I think we need to improve it slightly. And like you say, it's a, it's a balancing act. Um, so those are my thoughts. I'm, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing here. It's obvious that, that you, have, you and the city staff have gone uh, to work and have taken this seriously, and I hope this will reassure our, our constituents and the citizens of the community. Any other comments or questions for Alderman Cimento? And I might be the only one, but when I look at the time to clear, does that mean from curb to curb, or is that just one shot down the middle? Any idea? Uh, Madam Chair, Alderman Cimento, Typically, time to clear it, you know, that would, that would be a, a shot through, and then we'd come. So that, that would be probably the first shot through, the 96 hours. You know, and then we, except this year when you have a storm after a storm after a storm, we didn't have time to go back and then widen, you know. So that was kind of what got us behind the eight ball this year. So I guess what I'd like to see from the professionals is, in, like, because we, uh, we have some time, like a chart in your best guess if we bought X number of equipment, more equipment, six blades or four loaders or this or that, then we could clear the streets in 36 to 48 hours. Or if we rented more equipment with the people associated with it, we would pay X number of dollars more to clear the equipment, you know, to get the snow down in 36 hours. And then compare those numbers to what we actually paid in, not overtime, but extra in snow removal this past winter so that we could make some kind of decision, because I think the council should make a decision. We want to, or our goal, we want to get the streets cleared in 36 hours or 48 hours or, to be honest with you, I think 72 to 96 is too long, my personal opinion. Thank Any you. other questions or comments? Yes, I have one. Go ahead, Alderman Berg. Do you know, so like with Mon with uh, Missoula, Montana, who does clear their residential roads, did they say? Uh, Madam Chair Aldmanberg, they, they don't clear them at all. They just let people drive on it and pack it down. <laughs> so they said, you know, one of the issues they have then is, of course, when it starts melting, then they've got eight-inch eight deep wheel tracks that people are getting stuck in their own neighborhoods, you know. So it's, uh, it's an inter interesting way to do things, I guess. I just I want to say I'm really glad that we got to see some of this hearing that Missoula doesn't plow their streets at all and Sioux Falls charges per square foot of frontage that as an assessment you know after sitting through um, yesterday's talk of assessments and how staunchly people oppose them you know 
the city of Minot, if we want to do things faster, we certainly can, but it does require money and resources. So I'm very thankful that we're able to see and hear um, what's happening in other places so that we can use it as a comparative tool um, as a city and as a citizen. What, what level of service do we want and what are we willing to, to pay or give up to have it? So, Alderman Pajagula. Just one more comment on the process. I think, uh, in, in my mind, this is kind of not the ideal way of doing it. We've taken some time. We outlined our concerns. We, rep we represented them to you. you. You gave us feedback initially. We took some time off. You gathered some data, and we're starting to develop a consensus. I think it's so the process here really, really, I like. Um, we've also, I think, excluded, been able to exclude some options that citizens have raised. And I think. I, as an advocate for the city, can can feel very comfortable about that. You know, putting plows. I had a conversation last night with somebody about wanting to put a plow in a garbage truck, and I explained that it doesn't work. Um, it doesn't work weight-wise, and also puts, takes the truck out of garbage commission. Um, so I, I think some ideas that have been generated now, we can say no, they're not going to work, and and we can feel comfortable with that. And we're focusing more and more on what is going to work. And as Chairman Chairwoman Schuler says, it's going to be a matter of of coming up with the money and and seeing what that proper balance is. So again, from my perspective, the the process we're going through is a very positive one, and and I think it'll lead more likely to lead to a better outcome. So thanks again. Uh, Madam Chairman, can I just have a clarification? What are we going to make recommendations to the council, kind of on a point by point, out of this? My understanding. What do you envision? My understanding was this was a discussion um, for like an internal review, and and maybe we could see what the city manager has to say. But we, I mean, we certainly could make recommendations, but uh, obviously, you know, with budget time coming up for those departments, really, what I would hope is that this this information would be used to help them develop. Um, their budget wants and needs for the upcoming year, which ultimately the new council will be the ones voting on that information. So um, we could certainly make a recommendation, but the reality is it still has to go through that budgeting process. Yeah, I guess I'm just thinking about declaring a snow emergency in advance. It doesn't cost anything. So maybe, Mr. City Manager, do you envision, would you like this body to make some of these point by point recommendations kind of a like Alderman Shimento said, well, I'd really like to get to 36 hours. Uh, Madam Chair and uh, Alderman Strait, I don't think it's necessary that you do a point by point on this. Um, as you recall, we got considerable criticism from the community about snow removal. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a thorough look uh, and provided a perspective uh, in regards to what our capabilities are. Uh, particularly from a resourcing standpoint, I think the staff has done just that. This is information for your your consumption, and I think the ad the appropriate place for making adjustments is going to be at the budget time, where you will have an opportunity to look at this particular challenge as well as other challenges, for example, potholes and other sorts of things that we have in the city that require uh, resources and balance them all together in the budget that we're going to uh, talk through and work through for 2018. And I think that would be the time where you can pick and choose which of these you can afford or would like to pursue going forward. But at this point, we envision this as strictly informational. Thank you. you bet. Any other questions? Thank you, Jason. Anyone from the audience have any 